So in the previous session, somebody asked about the gaming in AI. I just want to like before starting, uh, I wanted to show you guys this video. I really liked it. So I think you will enjoy this too. Just quick five minute video. All right, so last year, we added several new features to the engine to support foliage rendering, and the 419 used those features to ship Battle Royale Chapter 4. At the same time, Jacob over there and the team at Quixel were experimenting with what's possible for photo real foliage environments, as well as testing out the latest functionality that we've been building for Unreal Engine. So, Jacob's here with us today in the Unreal Editor. Let's explore the environment, and what better way to do that than off-roading? And what better way to off-road than in a Rivian R1T? Now, Rivian uses Unreal to power their instrument cluster, including 3D visualization of their vehicles. So we work with them to bring the R1T to life in this experience. Let's head on out, Jacob. Sure thing on my way. All right. So we're building tools for interactive and dynamic worlds. So here we have chaos physics simulating rocks that tumble as we drive over them. Leads bend out of the way, and we also added some real time fluid simulation. We worked with the team at Rivian to set up Unreal's chaos vehicle model to simulate the suspension of the truck and how the electric motors drive each individual wheel. Chaos also simulates how the tires compress and deform, and Metasounds enabled the team to precisely resynthesize the sounds of the electric motors and mix them with the anisonics of the jungle. The Rivian provided us with a highly detailed model of the truck, about 71 million polygons that were able to render in real time thanks to Nanite. Now, the Rivian not only looks incredibly realistic because of Lumen and Nanite, but also its materials. And today, we're introducing Substrate, our new material framework. And to better demonstrate it, let's swap the paint out for opal. Now, of course, you can't order a Rivian with Opal body panels, but Opal was the internal code name for this project and also a really great demonstration of substrate capabilities. The base layer models the iridescence, refraction, and reflections that occur inside of an Opal. And on top of that is a layer representing the polished surface and how light is absorbed as it travels through that clear layer of varying depths. And now we can add back on the dust and dirt layers and notice how the reflection changes when interacting with the dust layer, and that there are no artifacts along the transition from dirt to dust to opal. So substrate is more expressive, enabling artists to create materials like this with different shading models and compose and layer those materials as they see fit. All right, let's uh, cut out out, Jacob. On my way. In terms of performance, substrate materials that are similar to the current Unreal Engine shading model cost about the same. But now, artists have the freedom to offer more complex materials for extremely detailed use cases, like in cinematics and in film. So we're going to drive under this fallen tree here, and everything that you've seen up to this point was painstakingly hand-built by the environment team at Quixel. Everything since that fallen tree has been built using our brand new experimental suite of procedural content generation systems. Entirely an engine that are flexible, deterministic, and artist-driven. Our guiding principle in building these systems was to empower artists to make tools for artists. So Jacob's going to go ahead and add a procedural assembly to the world. And the cool thing is that it communicates. <laughs> and the cool thing is that it communicates with other nearby procedural elements in the scene, like the creek bed, so let's say a designer comes by, wants to direct the player to drive to the left. Jacob can simply move the assembly to the right, and everything updates to accommodate that change. Game design is iterative, so let's say the designer comes back, wants to give the player the choice of going left or right again. Jacob can simply move the assembly back over. Now the artist who created this assembly also added some additional handles that Jacob can use to art direct where rock slides occur. Allows them to customize the piece a little bit more, make it a little easier for the Rivian to drive by. 
So we started by handcrafting that original part of the level to set the visuals and art direction for the entire piece, and then built out procedural tools that allowed the team to create a much larger play space much more quickly. Now let's see how we can use these procedural tools to make larger sweeping changes to the environment. So Jacob, let's start by removing some of the trees in this area. Absolutely, that's easy enough actually. All right, a little too much. Let's, let's add some trees back in. Okay. And let's also add in some cliff formations, give it a little bit more variability. So the procedural systems are all deterministic as Jacob is experimenting with different sets of input parameters once he finds a set that he likes, he can always go back to it and get out exactly the same result. And the procedural systems aren't just placing trees and rocks, but also fog cards, bugs, birds, everything that's needed to bring this environment to life. And everything that you've seen here works at scale. This environment is four kilometers by four kilometers. If we hide all of the procedural elements, we can see that original hand-built area about 200 meters by 200 meters. We believe that there will always be the need for hand-building environments, so we design these procedural systems to be tools for artists that work in concert with hand-built content. Both Substrate and the new procedural tools will be available in experimental form in 5.2. So this was just an example. Somebody asked about like how AI used in game development. If somebody's interested in game development, they should they should try this tool. It's pretty awesome. All right, then now, now we will start with our actual presentation enough of all the videos and uh, this is what we are going to learn today. So pretty much like with the with the technologies like chat GPT, it's really easy to make and web app right now. And it's like you are bounded by your own ideas. So I'll, I'll, I had an idea to make a game, like a small game that everybody can enjoy and everybody has played so that you can follow on and find like how to do this thing and uh, you can follow me like step by step by doing it the follow on procedures will like come later but it will come pretty soon and uh, yeah there's more to follow so this will be the agenda this is introduction and uh, We'll be making a game, Tic-Tac-Toe. I hope everyone knows what Tic-Tac-Toe game is. Yeah, so, and uh, towards the, by the end of it, we'll add AI to that game also, all using chat GPT and try to beat that game. Like I just created it a week ago and I could not beat him yet. So let's, let's see if anybody can beat that. And uh, I'll follow a way how to do that. And that's the agenda of, of this presentation. Right. So with the emergence of technology such as chat GPT has made the app development, or I would say web app development at least, as straightforward as preparing a meal. All that is required is modest amount of knowledge and research on the topic, and you can pretty much make anything what you have an idea for. So let's make a web app for playing tic-tac-toe game using chat GPT. And we'll add an AI player, which will play against us. And we'll deploy it and share it with our friends so they can also enjoy this game. So we can all play at the same time and try to beat the AI, I guess. Okay, so let's prepare a draft for our app. Like, what should that Tic Tac app look like? Like, what, what should be the components of it? What should be the parts of it? Like, I'm, I'm taking inputs at this point. Uh, can can you speak a little loud? Like I could not hear you. Okay. All right. That's one. Okay. 
So winning condition, losing conditions, all that stuff, yes. right? That, that's cool. Anyone else? Yeah, you guys are really deep into logical programming. So I think most of you will choose computer science at some stage. I can see two cases at least. More, any more? What, what should be the draft for our app look like? How are you seeing this before making it? Great. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm pointing to. Agreed. That's you guys did great, right? Yeah. Any anything else? Should have like some code. What? The the code code. Like, yeah, yeah. So doesn't it all seems like you are making something like uh, preparing a meal and you are gathering all the ingredients before you make a meal? So that's that's what I see like what draft could be like. And uh, let me see. So I think we have got pretty much everything covered. Um, do you have more ideas? What should what should ever have? Pay any sense pay future? Yeah, that's that's cool. Huh? Okay. One thing that I think uh, you guys did not mention is the restart button. Any if you wanna like, you know, I I played around with I wanna restart this game, that should be there. Right. So we have a draft ready now. Difficulties, yeah. I I think so. I should have wrote wrote all of this down. This many ideas I did not came up with also like in the slides, upcoming slides. What my ingredients were like. I was making a simple meal, I guess. So let's see. But have your ideas. We can implement them as we go along. So we have a we have our chatbot. Uh, we have our chat GPT and we can pretty much ask it to do anything. Yeah. Oh, so, so how, how does an AI cheat? If it is, yeah, it, it, rules, rules are there, but how does it cheat? Isn't it like if it can see every possible move that you're going to make and have a counter move for it, is it cheating? Or is it like being professional or is it like he's really good at it? What what do we say that? Like Gary Caspro, when he won, he said that uh, AI is cheating. He knew everything. Okay, okay, so cool. That's set it random. Yeah, like any difficulties at any point of time. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a nice idea too. Like, have your ideas, guys. Have as many as have as much ideas as you can right now. We are going to implement this idea further, and you can do this too. You can go home, have your ideas, implement like what I have implemented, built on it, or make something different. I just want to uh, tell you like how to how to approach this problem to make a web app that you can deploy and share with your friends. It's fun. So. At least you before starting to coding, you should have an interest of why you should code, like what it can do for you. So I'm I'm my job is to build that interest in this session and rest you can follow. Okay. And I think we did the brainstorming and we discussed what it uh, what should be its functionality, et cetera. Okay. So this this was my uh, that's what I thought some of that coincide with you guys, but I never thought of like making a difficulty level for it or a feature so that it cannot uh, you know always win that kind of situation. But yeah, this is my draft, and I had three objectives for this game. Uh, X and somebody pointed out should have different colors, so X should be red and zero should be green color. It should tell us whose whose turn is this, and uh, it should have a reset button. That's that was pretty much basic idea that I had. Okay. Any time you have any questions, just throw up. I'm good. Okay. 
what are the ingredients of making this app i'm really ahead of my presentation i guess okay so now that we have learned to how to what are the ingredients that we need i think we really need to think about how to make this possible you should have some idea of research that uh, what does a web app comprises of what what are these critical components what what each one of this is used for so at at start it it can look like uh, it's it's a lot let's say oh uh, what is html like most of you know like in the morning interaction i think you guys know html css and javascript it's like the co basic components of all the websites that you see and uh, for the ai move why do i need this algorithm that's research and a method to deploy all this this is this is like the procedure i would say to make the meal possible and go forward with it so i just if if it is like uh, anything that you don't understand in this you can point it out or is it simple enough for everybody who okay so we need to learn what html css and javascript is like as simple as possible and uh, we need to learn what is ai minmax algorithm maybe and what is like how to deploy all this to so that we can share it like a actual web link <clears throat> that's what i said so i'll before moving on to next slide what is like most of you know javascript right and most of you know about websites and such right so what is html css and javascript all right cool It's cool. You you came here to learn, right? It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Individually, what what are their roles in our web development? HTML because it's kind of the the networking part of it, so it's because of the URLs and interaction with other things on the on the network. JavaScript because it's actually like based on what's being coded, so it's the original thing in the website. Who we'll, we'll have an idea of making a list? Anybody like up until this point? One, Sorry. two, three, four, five, six. Most of them. Do you have? No? no. Like, do you have an idea of making a list? Like, yeah, I know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Okay, cool. Like, WordPress and stuff? Like, do you Google site? Google site, yeah. WordPress. I mean, so but you should know how they are made, also, right? Some some damn engineer, like really good engineer, made something that we are following. But we should know how to make these things also. And that about like uh, pretty easy stuff. You can make something and uh, see changes pretty quickly. Like when you are making an app, it's not the same. A mobile app, it's not the same. You provide you need a large setup. But web app, you only need a browser. That's it. And you need three files: HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That you can play around with, see the graphics ahead of, ahead of you, and pretty much do anything. So that's what I started with programming, making web pages, and I thought it's pretty really cool. Okay, so around seven of you have some idea or experience of making web pages, right? So, in simple words, they all said it right. What's an HTML? HTML gives a website structure like the text on the page that you see, it gives the structure. and uh, like what's what's your name Finn. Finn. like Finn said uh it has links also so you can navigate between pages so it has that functionality also that's html css like what's your name sadi 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 okay sadi just like said it pretty much deals with the graphics part of it like the style, page color, text color, everything that you see that is representable is taken care by CSS. I'll show you each one of these, like what's what, what, how it is interacting and stuff. But yeah, and JavaScript. 
like CD said again, uh, JavaScript adds behavior to the page. Like what, what happens when you click a button on a website? Like what happens when you click submit after filling up a form? What happens when you try to hover over something? So all those things. Will anybody has any questions like or anything? Yeah. Three different things, how did they interact with each other? That's that's a really nice question. So um, they can be part of a single page also, or they can be three different files and you can provide link to this file saying that, okay, for this page, consider this style sheet or consider this JavaScript behavior. You write it separate and you uh, you keep it in a sim one folder. So that's that's how they interact with each other. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Ranjit, do you have any questions? You look like no. Okay. All right. Just let me know. Let's you wanna you have any question? Okay. Now it's time for you guys to add your own thing to it. So open up chat if it everyone. Chat dot open AI dot com. Open it. Like I'm pretty much sure like everyone uses it up until this point. So everybody should have an account, but I would like you to follow on and volunteers can help them get in if they have any questions. Just let me know when everybody's logged in. I hope you really follow on and make this on your own. But even if you can't make it all the chat bot messes up, it's fine. We have backup also. It's cool. But it's it's pretty simple. Okay, before starting, how many of you guys actually want to know like how the AI player makes move? Like I can play a video if anybody is like, it's okay, I just wanna go forward with it, making it, it's also fine. So you, anybody else, like how the AI player actually makes you? Anybody else, like one more, one more, just one more. All right, cool. Uh, it's pretty known uh, example in game theory and it's called the min-max algorithm. We'll use this. I think this one is good. So let's just play this. Do not bore you guys. I'll increase the speed a little, if that's fine. Or sh should the normal speed should be good? I think so. You so don't you want to run it. It's a lot, it's a lot. Just bear with it. We we are very soon to reach our goal state. Just bear with Game it. Chess. One aspect of this is the search algorithm, which is what allows the program to look ahead at possible future positions before deciding what move it wants to make in the current position. This white dot represents some position in our game with the white side move. To keep things simple, let's say that in every position there are only two possible moves to choose between. We can visualize these moves as two separate branches, at the end of which are two new positions, where it's now, of course, Black's turn to move. We can continue expanding the tree of moves until either we reach the end of the game or we decide to stop because going deeper would take too much time. Either way, at the end of the tree, we now need to perform a static evaluation on these final positions. The static evaluation just means trying to estimate how good the position is for one side without making any more moves. For example, a crude approach in chess would be to add up the values of the remaining white pieces 
and subtract from that the values of all the remaining black pieces. So large values would favor white, while small values would favor black. For this reason, white is always trying to maximize the evaluation, while black is trying to minimize it. Is it is it complicated? Should we go with it? Go with it, right? Cool. It's kind of complicated. Do you want to still see it or like just go with it? I, I promise you it like this video in the first glance does not make any sense to me also, but this guy explains well and later on the stage you will get it. Just just skip it. Yeah, but you have any questions, please feel free to interact with me. So let's start with these two positions on the bottom left. So we evaluate them and they come out as minus one at plus three. Well, in the previous position, it was white's turn to move. And since white would, of course, choose the move that leads to the highest evaluation, we can assign this position a value of three as well. Next, let's evaluate these two positions. And so we get plus five and plus one. Once again, from the previous position, white would pick the move leading to the highest evaluation. And so we can assign it a value of five. We've now evaluated both the positions stemming from this position, where it's black's turn to move. Black will choose the move that leads to the lowest evaluation, and so we can assign this position a value of three. I'll very quickly step through the other half of the tree. Say we evaluate these as minus six and minus four, white will pick the minus four. The next two positions are evaluated as zero and nine, so white will pick the nine, and between minus four and nine, black will pick minus four. At last, we've arrived at the top of the tree, where we can see that white should choose the move on the left. Okay, so what's, what's your name? Lina. Okay. So imagine it's not this. Imagine we are playing a game. We have to pick up numbers. We have a bunch of numbers in the pool and we have to pick up numbers. You win if you the, the given number is like lowest. Uh, I get some points by picking some numbers. You get some points by picking up numbers. We don't know that number. Okay. We just choose our best. And you win if the number is the minimum, like you have less of scores. I win if I have the highest score. All right. So more less is fine for you more is good for me all right so this is the visualization of that you're picking up moves based on like these are the points of it you're picking up moves so which is which is whichever is the best possible move but what happens is like when we are playing game we don't know which scores are there right we're just picking up and trying to win like a game of luck but ai knows ai or computers they they know each and every move and they try to choose which is the best possible uh, is out of them, like the maximum possible number. He'll, he'll know every move and he'll try to pick the best possible one. That's what the visualization is. This is your turn. This is my turn. This is your turn. This is my turn. Understood? I don't think so. The black players, the black players, the black things represents the player. Yeah. Himself, and the white things represents the AI. Yes. Okay. Only is that it. It plays with itself, so it knows each and possible move. Like you, when you when you move your pawn one ahead, it already has played the entire game with that possible moves. All right, and so that's cool, right? Anybody has any questions? Any difficulties understanding? Cool. Since that way, even if black plays the best move, white will still get a plus three position. So now that the basic idea is completely clear, let's look at how this is implemented in code. We have a function called minimax, which takes in the current position, a depth for how many moves ahead we want to search, and a bool called maximize in player. We begin by checking if depth is equal to zero or if the game is over in the current position, in which case we return the static evaluation of that position. Otherwise, if it's currently the turn of the maximize in player, which in our example means it's white to move, then we want to find the highest evaluation that can be obtained from this position. So we create a variable called max evaluation and initialize that to negative infinity. We then loop through all the children of the current position. And by children, I just mean the positions that can be reached in a single move. To find the evaluation of each child, we make a recursive call to the minimax function, passing in the child, depth minus one, and false, since it will now be the other player's turn to move. We can then set max eval equal to whichever is greater between the current max evaluation and the evaluation of the child position. Once we've evaluated all the children, we can return the maximum evaluation that we found. Now we do essentially the same thing for the minimizing player, creating min eval set initially to positive infinity 
And for each child position, we call minimax, passing in the child depth minus one, and this time true. Minival then gets set to whichever is smaller between the current minimum evaluation and the child's evaluation, and finally we return the min evaluation. So we are looking for, right? If, does anybody understand it? I did not the first time, but he explains it. Yeah. The restriction between the, um, the max max and the average should be constant. Yeah. So it's like, so it's the maximizing clarity of the recursive function is common. Yes. Yeah. So it's like it, it jumps from minimize to maximize, minimize to maximize. So that's not a separate function. You remember the true or false in the boolean in the last? That's how we see it. So okay. true, false, true, false. It's like minimizing, maximizing, minimizing, maximizing. It, it will run through the example. If you don't understand that, I I don't understand it like now even. Let's step through so, this example again, this time with the code will, in front of us. First, though, we'll need an initial call to the minimax algorithm to start things off. Okay, we're at the first position and we want to find the max of the two children. So we call minimax on the first child. It wants to find the min of its two children, so it calls minimax on its first child, which in turn wants to find the max of its two children, so it calls minimax on the first. At this point, though, depth is equal to zero, so minimax returns the static evaluation of that position. This value gets. A any question at this point? Yeah. Uh, where does it uh, initialize the base case? Here. It's initialized by two. So the, the base case, when it gets the step to the zero at the end, it will equal to one. Oh, so it's like here the depth is start, start as three. So that's how far we want to see in the tree. So where those values? Uh, like we initialize them. You no, know, we can give it any value. So they're like an like an outside array. Yes. Like so it's initialized by three. So it's like the the higher number of depth you see, the higher the number of like a move you see there. Yeah. yeah. Like this sort of like explain this with chess. How would it like figure all this out? Do they have data to show so at, at base case, at base case, let's say everything starts with them. Then it starts to add up and subtract numbers. That's what makes up uh, the game after that. That's like you gain points or you lose points after that. All right. So any, any question on that? Anybody did not understand this? Or like it's hard to get or anything? Yeah. So the that it would be like going down like three levels, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's how far you want to see. If you increase the depth of the tree, you you see more far. All right. The more the depth, the more computation required for the computer, the more ahead it sees. Okay. Which then calls minimax on its second child, receives the static evaluation from that, and returns the max between the two children. That value gets passed up to its parent, which now calls minimax on its second child. Minimax is called on its two children, getting their static evaluations, and the max is passed up to the parent, which passes the min of its two children up to its parent, which now calls minimax on its second child. I'll stop with the blow by blow narration now, but Hopefully, it's quite clear how the algorithm uses recursion to search. Yes. So it's like it. You can say that it's randomly generated. It does not matter what those numbers are. It's just like when you move ahead of up in the game, that's when it starts picking up. You can initialize all of them with ten. It will still work. Should be true. You've seen how plain Minimax works. Let's run through this example yet again to look at how it can be sped up using pruning. These first few steps are the same as before. Pro I think pruning is not required. Pruning is like making it more efficient, but you guys don't need it at this point of time. This is also like uh, not high school stuff, I would say. You guys understanding it's, it's pretty great. Like I had planned to just keep it and move forward with what we have. So now everybody that understand how the minmax algorithm works, we can go ahead and give this prompt to chat GPT. We understand each and every part of it. So let's, let's start by making our app. All right, does anybody, everybody has opened your chat GPT? Okay, this is the first prompt. Give it, give this prompt to the chat GPT right now. Yeah. 
Like you don't have to be a fat. It's fine. Just let me know when you guys are done. Cool. Is it generated? Something written up? When you guys are done, I'll give next prompt. We have five prompts. That's it. You don't even have to give the exact same thing. Yeah. You can modify and see what. Yeah. So done? Done with the first prompt, everybody? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So this is the next prompt. Like this is where we would have stopped if you want just to play a game. Like, or to tell who's done it. The cloth is done or the old stuff. I'm sorry, my English might be not really good. So if, if any problem in the chat GPT suffices, like he understands, it's cool. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Is it exciting or is it like basic? Is it exciting? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can have like go home, try to make a new game. Maybe make chess. Maybe make like snake and ladders. Like whatever. Make any game, any app. It's cool. This is the third prompt. The UI is user interface. It's cool. We are saying AI to add AI into a game created by AI. <laughs> that's three AI in a sentence. That's how our, that's how the companies are right now. Like any startup, they just say AI and you get investment. It's like yeah. <laughs> Anytime they are losing a piece, they say AI. <laughs> Like see the last Google presentation. They said AI like 70 times in our in that yeah. thing. Yeah. But when they were when they were launching Bard, they were like AI, AI, AI. Right. This is the prompt number four. This is what we learned. So we are just implementing this. Ingredients and recipe stuff. I'll say something to what it is going to do. So when you are making something simple as this that does not require memory of its own, then without the database, you are fine, right? When you are making something like chat GPT, it requires learning process. It requires how to respond to your text. Like when you are asking something, what are you asking about? It needs to see the data. So last time you made it. This is like one of the most classic examples. Yeah. You see like millions of data already available. But if you want to do something unique, then maybe here we are not using any data also it's like the ai comes from the game theory here it's 
not really AI, but it's the foundation of AI. When everybody started uh, seeing AI and talking about AI, that's where they started. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But but see, like it predicts, like it it learns. It's it's playing with you, so it's AI. All right, everybody done with the fourth prompt? Just add a little garnish, I would say. The food is already cooked. Garnish something. Optimize the code for better readability and functionality. Doesn't need it, but looks good, right? Garnish. Done. Oh, yeah. those stuff happens. It's fine if everybody's not done. Also, like I'll provide this presentation to you guys. You can check again, or I'll provide the chat GPT output too. That's what I was generated. It's cool. Everybody done with the last prompt? Or is it still someone done? All right, cool. So let's see. What's this? Let's see. So everybody should have this three kind of files, right? This HTML, this CSS, which is like give it border, give it center, color it red, color it blue. That's CSS. This is HTML. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Also, it should have like a style tag, but like you, sh yeah, they should have a style tag and script tag with it. And yeah, so you can just copy and paste the entire thing and make a folder uh, named Tic Tac Toe. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll guide you. So everybody should have ended up like something like this. Does it? And it should have like a min max function also somewhere. No, oh, when I, yeah. So I refined it like first I asked to do it the same like as you guys did, but I saw that min max algorithm was still not there. So I said add an option to play against AI again, then it did. So here is our min max algorithm. Looks pretty similar, right? That what we have learned, but not that difficult to implement once you have learned it. Looks very similar to exact to that exact algorithm, but doesn't matter. All right. Here is like at last index file, CSS file, and uh, JavaScript file. So you have to copy that and make something like this. Here, yeah, like this. You have to make three files, copy them like this. I'll I'll open up a Visual Studio code so that you can understand better. Yeah. So this is my index file. This is my script file. All of it. And this is my CSS file. Looking good. Even if you don't find it, it's, it's fine, it's fine. You just have to follow on. You will generate it somehow.
Yeah, yeah. You can make the file in text edit also. Like you don't have to. I, I'm just showing this for visualization. Like everything has. if you could not follow on also like yeah i understand like sometimes chat gpt does not give you correct responses so it's it's all fine I'll... Are they are coding Dr. Shit. It's fine, it's fine. So once you have this kind of structure, what you do is like just this, like what this, this is this is the Eureka moment or what, whatever, I, I don't know, like something. Hello. Like anybody done? Anybody is like follow down and pull? No? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'll provide the files to you also. You can give it more prompts to see like correct it. This is not working. So here guys, here, here, here. I think everybody is having problem making the individual files, right? All right, here, follow this. I don't know, not everybody has Mac, I guess, but let's see. You, are, you make a new folder. Hello. Hello. Prompt you. So I need to These are all, if anybody wants to follow up on the prompts, these are the prompts.
see, see if, if anybody's having problems just see see here hi hello hold on hold on let's see let's see here i think everybody's having problem making the making the folders right the files is it hello yeah is it that's the problem so oh is it It's fine. Like I'll, I'll give you the files also. Uh, you can try it on from here. So it's maybe maybe we can uh, start from there. Once once like show. Uh, I don't want to break the flow. And I want to go forward to how to deploy it also. So let's just assume that everybody get the files. All right. For now, if everybody is okay with that, I'll help you guys before you leave. I'll help every one of you to get that thing. All right. So here, yeah, everybody, let's see, let's see. So this is what it should look like. And literally what you have to do to play the game now is to double click on it like a This is this is it. Like once you are done, you just double click at the index.html file, and this is what you get. And now you are ready to play. Who wants to play? Like anybody? Volunteers, I need volunteers. Not you, volunteers. You want to play? Try to be. Naeem could not do that. Oh, what? What happened? Oh. Uh, you have to restart. Oh, let me do that. Oh. It's always your turn. That's that's what I saw. Like it's so quick to it's, it's always your turn. This is gonna be a cat each time. Yeah. Yeah, each. Like it's that's when the moose is like the. Anybody else you want to try this? Yeah. What? Who the time is trying to do? I started. Yeah. All right. Let's start. See your time. Yeah, it is going to be talking. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Like we have, we have some files. Anybody else? Want to try this? Go ahead. Oh, it's trying to be Okay. Yeah. yeah. So who, somebody said it's cheating, right? Well, what's what's the name of the guy? Do you wanna try it's cheating? I guess it's cheating. It's always a tie. You never win. Come on. Yeah. Cheating. Define cheating. <laughs> I think you're going to win. No, it's another time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So AI is good, right? It made its own game using AI and we cannot beat it right now. Like it's a simple game. We should, should be able to beat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe if some... If we, we make mistakes, right? It's not making mistakes, that's right. Yeah, come on.
Is it? Why is it half? No, we start. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> think to right? Yeah. No. Nope. I surrender. <laughs> so in here in University of South Carolina, in the first of the AI classes, this they teach this basic stuff. That's one of your basic classes. Everybody learns Minnax algorithm. All right. So last part I'll I'll tell you how to deploy it and uh, share the link. Caleb, can you come here? Yeah, bring your laptop. Yeah, I think it's fine if you don't bring your laptop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's be here. All right. So now we will learn how to deploy this link or share this tool within everyone so that everybody could enjoy this game and try to beat the AI. We can have a national level something to beat the AI, I guess. Yeah, you can place your laptop here and sign up for GitHub. Yeah. GitHub is a code sharing platform and code managing platform. Like when you have a bunch of team members working on the same code, you need GitHub. When you want to share code with someone, you need GitHub. It's a code sharing, code managing platform. For the next session, for the like for uh, 20 25 minutes, I could work on it so that to really make that app if you guys are interested, like in everybody's computer, or we can uh, learn about essay writing. Essay writing, how to use that GPT in uh, sorry, that GPT in other AI tools that so that you guys will get it. Any questions? Yeah. Any All right, let's go. Okay, so press on create a new repository. So this is this is just a, a way to deploy and share. So, what happened here? Is the internet not working again? It's working. Yeah. Yeah. Here, name it anything you want. Name your app here. Oh, it's just tic tac Yes. Anything. If you want to name it Caleb Tic Tac Toe, you can do this also. Do that also. It's your GitHub. Give it a new repository. All right. And we'll upload our files here. Whatever we have, choose files, these three files, open. Let me change this. I hope you really like this settings and pages. Main, save. Okay, so it's getting built now. Once it's done, we'll open it uh, in our phone, mobile phone or laptop. So all of you can say 
And that's your own personal ring, by the way. That's yours. Did you enjoy this exercise? This one? Yeah. How was it like on? No, I won't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Okay. I want everyone to go to this link, that link that you see in the browser. Okay. How do I? Nah. Is, is the link visible? That, that link? Yeah. I want everybody to go to that link. I cannot see. It's not visible? Let's see what happened. Yeah, this thing. And you can make this thing like it's free, so you can make any app, deploy it, share it anywhere, list it on your resume after really understanding it.
Okay. We take a short break before our next session or anybody has like, anybody wants to do, sir? Yeah. Yeah, TikTok don't have that. Like, like you can literally either do my task in these times. So I think we'll have to make another app and try to do that. So the weird the scenario is all this weird that it's possible to do whatever we want to do. Want to try it? Should I put up the should I put up the prompt again? People want to try it again? No. Um, these are the prompts. If you want to try again, this five prompts and everything is done. This this five prompts. Hmm. That's it. To make that AI game, you wanna play that, Doctor? To to, to the. Uh, uh, um yes. for the OCHAT really? Yes. Hold on. Try to beat this doctor. Hmm? Try to beat this game. Nobody oh, try to is able beat this? To, yeah. Nobody is able to beat this. So th this is tic tac -toe. Oh, I start anywhere? Yeah. AI plays against you. Hmm? AI plays against you. Uh-huh. But this should this should be you can't win. Yeah. No, you you can yeah, draw or draw, but you cannot think. Yeah. Just wanted to show them a little thing. This uses AI simple algorithm. Oh, I I didn't pay attention. I <laughs> think <laughs> that's human. That's what it, the human has leveraged. Yeah. Yeah, first session is done. Huh? First session is done. They have to register the Any questions so far? Like anything you guys want to add on, or any guys? Anything you have ideas like in the start of the session, we have some ideas, right? To implement uh, uh, what fe features like uh, difficulty levels. Maybe you can ask chat GPT to add difficulty levels and uh, two player mode where you are playing against your uh, friend, not against an AI. We can add that. Hmm.
All right, we take like a break till 150 and we gather again. So what's the class of the
I think most of you are having problem like there's some errors in the code. So try to do give all these five prompts in one book. Like create a tic tac toe game and give all and follow the steps and give all these prompts in one book and see what happens. Let's see. Let's try this. To take another session, they are just put into it. <laughs> I have a appointment at two, so I'll be leaving. Good. Good luck. Yep.
we like it. Let's make a small group for these guys. Like which in in yeah. where? Google chat. Google chat. Yeah. share it with them so that they'll so, be able to so it's a public repository right they can they can follow Caleb's yes where Caleb Caleb uh, can you share your github link to each and everyone so everyone has the access to the files that you just uploaded or uh, maybe I can um no, not that. Hold on. So if anybody wants this files, they click a picture of this. Yep. So those who are not able to generate these files, they can download this files from this link. Yeah. Anybody need help in deploying it to GitHub? Ranji, do you know how to deploy it on GitHub? Yeah, all right. Cool. We should all upload it. What? I think we should all upload our files. Yeah. Um, upload your files, then you have your own link that you can share with your friends and family. Okay. That I mean, we have a link that you can share. So do we like make it public? Yeah. Okay. And then
should we start our next session now we have one final session Okay, so we can start our next session now. It's like uh, uh, how to use AI for studies and not just for cheating, I guess. So, and at the end of this uh, whole thing, I'll show you how, and sh I'll show you an example how AI can be collaborative and make your process of learning much easier, much fun, and uh, how, how AI is not, taking away that opportunity to, you know, learn something and is a better way or is making, uh, help us make most smart, I guess. So, so what I'll, I'll start with this question. What do you use chat GPT or other AI tools for right now? Like mostly this. Okay, so you know that uh, chat GPT doesn't always provide you necessary information, right? Like it's not accurate each time. For example, in our lab, we, we used to have this example each and every time. If you ask who is the first lady right now, it will be, it will point out to uh, not Donald Trump's wife because it is trained before, before some time. So it does not give you all the right, uh, it's not always accurate information and uh, there's something 
it's like common sense which is not there they say uh, so they have common sense i think i think they can understand like bard can understand some sense of common sense uh, but initially when it was launched we used to ask chat gpt like what's the color of white house of napoleon then it starts telling about napoleon and other stuff but never to the point like we give we have given the answer in the question like what is the color of white house of the napoleon just like it does not have common sense to answer but it, it to us it was like oh it's just a huge database and if it does not understand it. but later chat gpt4 and bar then we asked the same question again it was accurately pointed out that oh you the the answer is in your question itself so that's it but uh, yeah so my question was what are we using it for right now you say it's for essay writing somebody says uh, uh for information what else what else we are using chat gpt or other ai tools for what do you use chat gpt or other ai tools for for maybe not necessarily for chat sheets but for like maybe like in our people using like to actually have like access to the file okay yeah i hear yes what else Yes, yes. Refining your text. Yes. What else? Like I'll I'll give you ideas to how to use. I have bunch of ideas. First, what do you use for? What do you use for? Chat GPT for? Or what will you use it for if you haven't used it yet? I like that. But see the potential of Chat GPT that I just showed you. It has it is capable of making a web app that is powered by a, a, AI and made by an AI. So what you can do using it is like I don't know. It's it's limitless, I would say. So let's give us some examples. So we can use Chat GPT for or AI tools for answering questions or assistance in your homework. study aid essay writing language learning you want to learn new languages like spanish french etc it can be useful and um, your own personal development test preparation you want to be clear on some concept that you can use for you can use it for career guidance and a lot of other stuff these are some examples that i gave you okay so how many of you have heard of perplexity.ai not chat gpt chat gpt is cool and stuff but how many of you have heard of uh, perplexity.ai you have heard of it have you used it yeah i think it's going to touch it too because like i don't want to bring it over <laughs> yeah huh? not anybody else i'll show you that and i'll show you what is it useful for So it's pretty much same like chat gpt but it provides you with reliable information because it gives you citation of the sources at the end of it so when you want to rely on something for studies i think this is a better option to do so um so let's say <laughs> let's ask uh, can you explain the concept a photo synthesis yeah so it gives you a detailed information about it but where it is drawing information from also so it is drawing information from wikipedia bajus and all this uh, other platforms that you usually don't see in uh, chat gpt and the reason i like this also it's because it has some of like here you see if you are not using the paid version it has like five prompts that you can give to chat gpt 4 instead of chat gpt 3 so let's say i want to do something uh, that is uh, not available on chat gpt 3 Right, right as of now. So let's run an example. Uh, 
uh, you want to be you want to have an admission at a prestigious university name it which university you want name one like prestigious university you want to do college on usc uh university of south california is it usc this usc all right any other anyone else okay let's do okay you are my teacher i want your help you straight don't have to go and ask like oh oh write me this that, that's not how it should be how ai is used so this should be like something like this you are my teacher i want your help in uh, writing an essay for college admission at usc i hope it understand usc so now your example is not running on uh, those chat gpt3 things it, it's actually running on chat gpt4 so it will again ask you some uh, some more things to provide input as like what's the main theme or topic of your essay and select the aspects you need help with it's not like it's providing you the answer it's like asking you what do you need help with so what should be theme of your essay like when you want college admission what should be theme of your essay what what defines you A anything like it's, it's not crazy what what yeah yeah but you have to define like or oh, um like uh, what are you good at like what what made uh, you worthy enough for admission at any prestigious college you have to define you know topic like that so let's say um main theme or top topic of essay like any ideas up until this point do you guys have anything let's say uh, ai engineer caller okay anything to add let's just keep that and just press continue for now it will generate something and it will, it's drawing information from the web so you know where your sources are from so you are not caught in plagiarism and stuff i guess user request okay so it's again helping us not providing us with the answer so as you pre prepare to write your college admission right to the university of south southern california focusing on your experience as an ai engineer caller using requires application right one or two things your supplementary yes is whatever so how how do we move forward from this uh, position right now like it it has given us some some things so let's say we have our uh, um we have our achievements and we want to add our achievements to our essay okay uh, write me a college essay on this theme and add my achievements like first prize in a national hackathon what do you want to achieve in like six months let's say what do you like before your college what, what should be your achievements to to 
go to a prestigious institute institution what what are your not for gps is good but what what should be your achievements can you add achievements here anything that you guys want to achieve come on give me something like it i know it's very late but still i want something to add there any achievement huh good grades yeah 4.2 is like it it happens like it's okay uh 4.0 GPA, anything else to list as achievements, your achievements for the essay? Yeah. Research competition. Research competition or? Okay. Research award. Um, Neuroscience. Anything else? Anything else? Your achievements. I think it's achievable. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So again, I think I. Okay, so now we have something like this, whatever, but the point being is that like, uh, it's, it's not providing you everything of your own, but a structure or a template for it that you can work on and uh, uh, you can add your uh, own tone here. Let's say you, you like to be more polite, you like to be more confident, you like to be more assertive. So you can add your own term in follow up of this of uh, of this AI, and the best thing is like uh, uh, you can use it actually for your studies. And uh, let's say this is this is a particular example for writing essays. You can use it for. Have you heard of quadratic equations? Anybody? Have you heard of quadratic uh, equations like AX square plus BX plus C? Yeah. So everybody knows this, that solution is this. Yeah, everybody knows that. How many of you know like how to solve that? Like if you give you that equation and you need to come up with this, this solution. Anybody, you know that? No? Like they, if, if given that equation, you have to come up with this equation as a solution. So most of you know yeah so i struggle with that maybe i can uh, ask chat gpt to come up with proof of this thing can you yeah <laughs> yeah that that's interesting like one plus one is two i i think so let's let's give it as next prompt
Is that how you solve it? Oh, I was mentioning like this this proof. I don't think so. You guys meant this proof that you can prove actually from that equation to this equation. Yeah. You cannot, right? So this is what I learned. Like you can explore maths. You can understand things better. You can. Uh, uh, you're not limited by what is your what is in your textbook nowadays. If you have any questions, like I used to be uh, really curious about things, like okay. I have this equation. Why does the solution look like this? Now I know. So there's no uh, limitness to your curiosity. You can ask pretty much anything to prove anything, and you're stuck. So that's it. Sky's the limit here. Just see, just see. Like anybody thought this could be proved like this? I don't know. I was interested in maths. So this sounded like a nice example. So mostly when you start programming, these are the uh, critical parts of critical thinking and analyzing a problem. So you have to be good at it. So uh, mostly what we used to do is to solve problems, coding problems, but uh, you can start from here since most of you are not exposed to coding, I guess, right now, like critical thinking and coding. So we will ask ChatGPT to improve our critical thinking by providing us with a question to discuss let's see should the use of genetically modified organism be encouraged or discouraged in agriculture what do you guys think gather information all that yeah but let's let's just discuss that question should should the use of genetically modified organisms can be encouraged or discouraged in agriculture do you have anything on that I don't know what that means. I'll, I'll just ask, give me another question. Yeah. Like, for research purposes, like, how much research do I have? Like, since the start of internet, whatever they had, whatever Microsoft had, they had. So whatever is accessible in public, I would say, um, because internet is has on its own large pool of data, right? And it's available in public. That's what they use to train chat GPT models for this large language models for. Yep. Yeah, there is, there is, there's always issue and ethics involved with the AI, like how much, uh, how much information should be used, how much personal information has been used, what what data has been exploited. So there was an example where, uh, you know, that image generation models like imagine. You don't know, like image generation models like DALI. Well, we, we will we'll cover that in next two sessions, like next to tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Wednesday we'll cover that, so you'll know. So those models, Yeah, 
So our company uh, really sued ChatGPT, like OpenAI, for using their uh, images, like uh, watermark images. Watermark images are like copyrighted images that you cannot use for your own purposes, right? So somebody generated an image like by giving it prompt, and it had that watermark also. So they were like, what? How do you have access to this image data? So it's it's really we have we need security we need ethics to using these things but yeah those are there. So 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 right now we discuss like uh, clarification critical thinking that you can use it for you can use it for writing essays you can use it for uh, solving problems like this uh, solving mass problem here this this tool have everything like you want to learn youtube uh, not learn youtube you want to learn something through youtube you, it can give you youtube recommendations it can help you uh, writing it can give you reddit based discussions wikipedia information and this wolfram alpha is uh, for math problem so it has a lot of things to offer i'll surely say to check this out it, it's a really uh, good ai out there that nobody most of us don't know and uh, i'll i'll end this session by uh by giving you an uh, collaborative video that i saw yesterday that uh, helps like how ai helps in education So uh, anyone who's been paying attention for the last few months uh, has been seeing headlines like this, especially in education. Uh, the thesis has been students are going to be using chat GPT and other forms of AI to cheat, do their assignments, they're not going to learn, and it's going to completely undermine education as we know it. Now, what I'm going to argue today is not only are there ways to mitigate all of that, if we put the right guardrails, we do the right things, we can mitigate it. But I think we're at the cusp of using AI for probably the biggest trans positive transformation that education has ever seen. And the way we're going to do that is by giving every student on the planet an artificially intelligent but amazing personal tutor. And we're going to give every teacher on the planet a, an amazing artificially intelligent teaching assistant. And just to appreciate how big of a deal it would be to give everyone a personal tutor, I show you this clip from Benjamin Bloom's 1984 Two Sigma study, where he called it the Two Sigma problem. The Two Sigma comes from two standard deviations, sigma is a simple for standard deviation. And he had good data that showed that, look, the normal distribution, that's the one that you see in the, the, the traditional bell curve right in the middle, that's how you know, the world kind of sorts itself out. That if you were to give personal one-to-one -to -one tu tutoring for students, you can actually get a distribution that looks like that right. It says tutorial one-to-one -one with the asterisk, like that right distribution, a two standard deviation improvement. Just to put that in plain language, that could take your average student and turn them into an exceptional student. It can take your below average student and turn them into an above average student. Now, the reason why he framed it as a problem, well, he said, well, this is all good, but how do you actually scale group instruction this way? How do you actually give it to everyone in an economic way. What I'm about to show you is, I think, the first moves towards doing that. Obviously, we've been trying to approximate it in some way at Khan Academy for over a decade now, but I think we're at the cusp of accelerating it dramatically. I'm going to show you the early stages of what our AI, which we call Conmigo, what it can now do, and maybe a little bit of where it is actually going. So this right over here is a traditional exercise that you or many of your children might have seen on Khan Academy. But what's new is uh, that little, little bot thing at the right. And we'll start by seeing uh, one of the very important safeguards, which is the conversation is recorded and viewable by your teacher. It's moderated actually by a second AI. And also it does not tell you the answer. It is not a cheating tool. Notice when the student says tell me the answer, it says, I'm your tutor. What do you think is the next step for solving the problem? Now, if the student makes a mistake, and this will surprise people who think large language models are not good at mathematics, notice not only does it notice the mistake, it asks the student to explain their reasoning. 
but it's actually doing what I would say, not just even an average tutor would do, but an excellent tutor would do. It's actually, it's able to divine what is probably the misconception in that student's mind, that they probably didn't use the distributive properly. Remember, we need to distribute the negative two to both the nine and the two M inside of the parentheses. This to me is a very, very, very big deal. And it's not just in math. This is a computer programming exercise on Khan Academy where the student needs to make uh, the clouds part. And so we can see the student starts defining a variable, left x minus minus. It only made the left cloud part. But then they can ask Khan Migo, what's going on? Why is only the left cloud moving? And it understands the code. It knows all the context of what the student is doing. And it understands that those ellipses are there to draw clouds, which I think is kind of mind blowing. And it says, to make the right cloud move as well, try adding a line of code inside the draw function that increments the right x variable by one pixel in each frame. Now, this, this one is maybe even more amazing because we have a lot of math teachers. We've all been trying to teach the world the code, but there aren't a lot of computing teachers out there. And what you just saw, even when I'm tutoring my kids when they're learning the code, I can't help them this well, this fast. This is really going to be a super tutor. And it's not just exercises, it under So this is what I was talking about when I said like AI could be used for the, uh, to save education and for your better, not just for cheating and stuff. So this is, this is the tool. I don't know if it is out or not, but uh, this is uh, what one-to-one -one tutoring and uh, AI in education looks like. All right. And uh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Do you have anything to try on um, among all these examples? Anything that you find particularly hard uh, to do it on your own? Understanding a concept is what uh, drives me crazy, I guess. Like sometimes I don't understand something. Yeah. Well, uh, Okay, understand. Okay, so let's see. So this is our main file. This is called the index.html file. Here you have a reference to your style sheet, and here you have reference to your uh, JavaScript. So it it this all gives you the text or the structure of your page. Now it takes some of this like class self, if you see here. So there will be a cell which is denoting like, uh, okay, it should be in the center. Its size, its height should be 100 pixels. It should be bordered. This hashtag DDD is the color of that. And uh, the cursor, when I go there, it should be a pointer. All these things are mentioned in the CSS file that is refers to. Right. And script.js file similarly is like, uh, how to say? It defines uh, what should happen if if some uh, interaction is made, like when you click one of those boxes, what should happen? These are the different functions written for it. So it refers to these files for functionality and styles. And this index.html or any HTML file is the structure page that it should interact with. Cool. Yeah. Anything else that you that you guys want to try on? Uh, chat GPT or perplexity.ai. We saw a lot of examples, how it can help you, right? Critical thinking, problem solving, understanding maths, essay writing, and uh, maybe planning a trip to Atlanta. It can do that too. No. So, so let's say, let's say you want this it's your app now right so it although it has coded everything let's say you want a very specific details of it to look like uh the cross should have this kind of uh, uh the cross should have not uh, you know pointy edges it should have circular edges or uh, you want uh, uh your ai to actually lose some time you want this kind of personalization that that could be understand only if you understand the program itself, if you know everything itself. Yeah. Also, I've tried to make it make stuff that's more complicated than just like 
Yes, yes. I have just chosen like a really simple example that uh, that can be done in chat GPT. But yeah, there is no limit to what you can do. You can have a starting code from somewhere that you really understand. Yep. So personalization, you still need coders for, and uh, yep, that's 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 the point of it right now. And some of them, they say like, uh, um, what we want is uh, like, you you had some error, right? You give it, the, you give your code and say like, try to find the error, but it actually fixes your code. Did you learn something? No. So this is what, I mean, this is what uh, have been pointed out to chat GPT and other AI tools. What it does is like, whenever you ask for some uh, find the error, it actually fixes your code and saying that and points of the error. That is some, and that is uh, pointed out as it's not what I needed. I did not ask you to fix the error, right? I just wanted to know what is the error. So this kind of things are still there. That's the problem of here. Yeah. It's, it's still here. It's, it's already here. Like the uh, robotics and AI is uh, not uh, uh, in a good state right now, like not in a top state, like chat GPT. Uh, but they are they are making it right now. They have made something called the uh, bio robots. I remember. So these they are working on a research where you actually uh, ingest your body with tiny living robots that helps you fight diseases. Yeah. Are those kind of robots? What? Yeah, these are tiny anything tiny nanobots or whatever. So I'm not sure on that question how they find that uh, the answer for, but you guys have seen that reinforcement learning example, right? Where the AI learns itself how to say hide and seek. So AI can also learn how to drive, so how to avoid obstacles. What? Not sure, but I think it's a combination of those reinforcement learning and some uh, something from the actual world. But back to the question, where do you struggle mostly that you think you can use AI for? Uh, um, in your studies, we can try on some examples before you leave. It's almost the time, but. So, it's pretty, like, actually, it came down to like Yes. It's, it's not actually, like, let's say, uh, you provide chat GPT with wrong information in the first place saying that this is the director of the institute tell me more information on it then it will generate some hallucinated examples saying that oh I know this guy he's from this university he has done research on this but the guy does not exist yeah. so hallucination is actually a problem in, in uh, large language models right now Perplexity, although it's right sources, sometimes it's not good enough to point out each and every source of the item. Yeah. So let's say, but you are providing this misinformation right now. The problem is misinformation. So you are providing a misinformation that it cannot cite, but but to confidently say that, oh, this person exists. I know this person because you have said that this person exists. Yeah. That's still misinformation, but yeah. Mm. Anything else from this side who are really bored right now? I don't know. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, 
in in the research community there is a common question being asked saying that do we recognize is it generated by ai so it's it's hard to understand question i don't think so that it can differentiate also that either it is written by an actual model or chat the way if we can understand that if a model can understand that uh, it is written by a human or any AI, then we have solved the problem right, right. that we have already in, yeah Yes. Yes. Balance. Yes. Yes. That that's true. Yep. Hmm. Any more questions? Mm. All right. Okay. How many of you know about uh, operating systems? A little point, right? Yeah. So let me try this. So yeah, did you guys see what happened? Now it is now the AI is behaving as an operating system. So I made went ahead and made an uh, directory called test. Now what, if you want to see that what's inside the directory, so what, what, which, what, what is inside your current directory, you do LS, uh, yeah, just LS. The test is there. It's outputting a terminal go saying that oh i'm inside this uh, thing so let's say let's make an uh, um, file name touch okay and uh, let's say that in the no. We are done, Dr. Stefan. Just taking examples and trying to show them more things. Yeah, just them. Did they did they all do the essay? Essay? I say I just pointed out them like how to interact and how to make an essay. I did not like give them an actual assignment for essay. The extra time that is what would be good for them to do. Okay. So, oh, so less less all of you. Uh, I pointed out to the tool perplexity, right? Uh, make a college essay for right now. Let's see. All of you use that tool to write your own college essay. About college admission, I say.
Yeah. Has like chat GPT four access. You use your uh, chat GPT four access like this. My by enabling that feature there. So I think the, the main thing the goal here is that we have a sense of the power of the tool, but also how you can mold it, how you can um, instruct it to uh, do, uh, you know, to, for it to take your personal experiences and interpret them in the essay. So that is the core part of it. It's really not interested in something that it easily does because then everybody can do the same thing and then you not have your distinction plus uh the uh you know nowadays um uh, currently there are tools available to say that this is likely just done by change and you know that you know, then if you do that uh, something that i say then you probably not score well and in fact you lose the quality of mission or whatever thing you're trying to do but you want to use it to give you a lot of things and then you customize it and make sure that it is you know changed to really fit your experiences and your ob objectives let's say for why you want to do college or what you want to do in college in terms of education so um there's a lot to it in the sense that uh you want to um, tell that okay i want three paragraphs i want 500 words I want uh, in the first paragraph I want this, in second paragraph I want this, in third paragraph I want this. They say change first paragraph to reflect this, change second paragraph to reflect this, change third paragraph to reflect this. Then you get a draft and then you uh, completely read again and, and change it to uh, make sure that uh, any unique uh, expressions that you want to have, any unique emotions you want to have, you are done all of that. But in the end, um, you know, suppose I have to write an essay and I um, uh, just start from sketch without any tool, then what happens is that I just, it will take a lot of time for me to get, the, get into the mood, to get into the thing. What should I start with? The thing that ChatGPT you can do would be to break this thing about uh, the, what's called, um, uh, writer's block. Right, that it's sometimes very hard to start writing something. This will get you started, and then you are modifying it. So that way, uh, I think it's a it's a win win. That's that's what you want to do. Now there are multiple things we can do. I mean, you can, uh, uh, you, in fact, you can. There may be a way to see or some online chat GPT generated as college essays. We just generated right now. Oh, you just did that. Yes. Okay. So let's see. This is what we generated here. Oh, you generate this? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So then did you ask them to generate their own? No, I was showing them other examples like critical thinking, how it can help in critical thinking, how it can help in verification, how it can help. Um, many of you guys cannot access the site, but it's talking. What? I don't know. I think you have school computers. Oh, school computers are not allowed. Mm -hmm. Can you have the chat GPT or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the same tool. It's just another name for it. Yeah. You can do chat GPT. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Like this cost some $50 or month or something? Yes. But I showed them like whatever they did on Kanamigo, they can use this tool for the same. Okay. Yeah. No, but in Kanamigo you use GPT-4. Yes. It has like some access to GPT-4, like five tokens you get that uses GPT-4. This side has like five tokens that you can use GPT-4 for free. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I showed them this site and it has like other things, Dr. Shifts. Mm. Um, like uh, you can ask computational questions, math questions. Uh, you can add the uh, YouTube recommendations. It gives you citation of YouTube recommendations. It gives you citations of writing and everything. It, it can give you a small uh, summary of your own work with cited papers. So you do check if the citation is good. I have good one. Shakespeare, then you're gonna get the Shakespeare ish kind of language. Then you're gonna tell you in that box. Say, we want to hear it from Aristotle, then it will be like sort of Greek kind of language. At that time, how Greek was. That's the kind of output we need. People are gonna generate that kind of. Because it has been depend on all of those yeah, it's probably like the fifth years to make the now the kind of she was now the two four game try to personalize as much as possible to appeal to you. Yes, like, yep. Delete about yourself and delete about the curated for you. 